Thanks very much to have this opportunity to report to you the processes and findings of a, a research project that sits within the Health Education to Employment Pathways program. I do apologize for not being able to work with you face to face today, but I'm in a different uh, country and, and time zone, and so it's that's not possible. This research project was conducted through Griffith University by myself and Anne Ha Lee, and also in conjunction with Checkup with David Millichep and Vicky Meyer. Now, the focus of the health education to employment pathways is to seek to address a growing demand for healthcare workers. And as I'm sure you're all aware that Queensland's health demand for healthcare provisions in Queensland is growing as both the population grows and also ages. And an emerging need for the state's healthcare system and educational sector is for them to work together, to collaborate, to attract, recruit and prepare and upskill and then retain an increasing number of paraprofessional healthcare workers across the state and its communities. So for these important goals to be achieved, collaborations are most likely to be required across schools, vocational education providers and healthcare systems and institutions to achieve those outcomes. And this is like to be achieved, particularly at the local level in regional, rural and remote community, as well as those within the metropolitan centers. And that local focus is important for reasons that will become very evident. So this task of, 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 of engaging and preparing and retaining young people is likely to be as follows, that it's important to engage potential employees and inform them about the range and kind of occupations that are found within the healthcare sector. And then importantly, align the capacities and interests of those individuals with those occupations so as to try and secure um, the two end goals of finding fulfilling work and meeting um, employment needs and, and healthcare sector needs. And then there's the effective preparation that, you know, being work ready for individuals to derive benefits from it, come to identify with those occupations is premised on the quality of the initial preparation, which includes educational experiences in schools, tertiary institutions and healthcare settings, and importantly, then how those experiences will be integrated. And then retaining um, employees is important because high staff turnover depletes capacities, it undermines the effective use of resources, burdens other workers and the healthcare system. Therefore, efforts to retain employees is a key imperative to sustain the provision of healthcare in the state. So this research project is an investigation that comprised the fourth phase of the HEAP project. And it comprises focus groups with 45 senior secondary school students who are currently engaging in courses associated with the healthcare sector, interviews with 21 stakeholders within the healthcare sector, including healthcare industry representatives, teachers, practitioners, and healthcare providers. And then surveys were collected and analyzed from over 50 respondents. So that gave us both qualitative um, uh, data and also quantitative data about a range of issues associated with this with these processes. And the informants for the focus groups were recruited from four schools um, in regional and metropolitan Queensland. And the project was funded by the Workforce Strategy Branch of Queensland Health. Now, the findings, it, 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 the, the key finding was the centrality of engagement. And that is that from the interviews and focus groups and survey data is that a key premise for attracting, preparing and retaining young and perhaps not so young healthcare workers is how they're effectively engaged with. So the qualities of engaging with healthcare education and our workplace practices stand as being core factors. And these are elaborated in an overview of the findings which I'll now present. So in terms of attracting recruiting, from the stakeholder interviews and student focus groups, 
factors that both engaged but also dissuaded individuals from these occupations were identified. And these were, can be seen as in terms of engaging conditions that you know, what was positive was the offer of stable work and employment opportunities, good pay and the ability to work with others and make friends. Engaging work that was insp inspiring, it was caring and compassionate work, it was helping community, individuals could learn new skills and participate in a diverse workforce. And forms of engaging support to, to see whether individuals would like these occupations and learn more about them came through opportunities to experience them, have tasters, the, the, the prospects of solid mentoring and cadetships. And then engaging education provisions were those that were provided applicable outcomes, such as understandings about health care work and also the promise of certification. Yet there were factors that would cause individuals to disengage, not to take up these occupations. And this was a lack of understanding about their roles, the, the actual or perceived negative experiences, distance from communities. So young people would have to perhaps move out of home to engage and a lack of familiarity with many of the occupations. We were repeatedly told that that um, young people know all about nurses and doctors, but not other areas within the healthcare sector. And disengaging conditions could be uncertainty, difficulty with practicums, the, 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 the issue of, of the reality of, of shift work and the lack of resources, how patients might react to them and the collective impact of these things upon young people's well-being. What we found was that, as with other studies, that in terms of what was influenced and decisions about post-school pathways and occupations were firstly parents, then teachers, and then peers and friends across both of those. There's nothing new in that, but it just shows the importance of, of the you know, significant uh, others and familiars in, in assisting those decisions. And that the, the, the most attractive work features is qualities of work was those that work that helps others it's well-paid work and has career paths. And in terms of the best ways to learn about those occupations to see if young people want to engage with them is visits to healthcare facilities, information sessions by actually healthcare experts, and then work placements, opportunities for tasters, et cetera. And in terms of the preferred forms of, of work occupations, it was seen that nursing was 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 there, and then work within hospitals and then ambulance services, ambos and, and paramedics. And in terms of the, you know, the, if young people were to make this investment and engage in um, in these occupations, that key requirements to do that is available accommodation. The work has to be interesting, has to be reasonably well paid and the ability to, to go home on weekends. A nice location is obviously a bonus, but the importance of if young people are making that sacrifice, they want improved career prospects. And then in terms of the preparing new employees, it's clearly more than undertaking courses, that it includes immersion in occupational practice in healthcare settings, guided by more experienced partners through which novices can come to learn and work together, importance of peer support there and and activities and supported by experienced healthcare workers so from the interviews and focus groups there are a set of factors that were seen to be important in the qualities of preparation and that was firstly engaging learning experiences these models of internships traineeships cadetships with its strong focus on practical engagement real experiences and hand-on on activities and engaging support, identifying pathways, mentoring, peer support, financial support, and for First Nations people, the importance of cultural sensitivity and of the support they would have to for their needs to be respected, and opportunities for foreshadowing. And then engaging educational provisions, those that offer pathways to higher education, and perhaps the ability to work part-time while studying, because this issue of how you would fund yourself through initial occupational preparation was frequently mentioned. Now, in terms of these, how these were captured in the survey, the most attractive qualities of an educational program was the provision of practical experiences that um, 
the, the teachers were were requested to be interesting and have um, relevant workplace experiences. Again, pathways to higher education and the importance of the combination of education and practice. And in terms of the desired qualities of an occupational preparation program, you know, ideally close to home, ideally includes a paid component of, 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 of financial support and importantly leading to national qualifications. And in terms of the teaching learning experiences, the, 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 the three key factors were all weighted the same. And that was teachers who experienced in healthcare work, again, that, 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 that desire. And then that which develops theoretical understandings and also practical abilities. And you'll see these are weighted evenly. And in terms of the best models, the approaches to you know, how the initial preparation should be organized and enacted, it was said that a combination of education and work-based experiences was the most preferred. And that initially that you know, next was having an education experience, then workplace experiences, and then thirdly, the idea of structured experiences in educational settings. But sitting within this is this combination of educational experiences and workplace experiences. Now, in terms of retaining um, healthcare workers, um, this was premised upon having work environments which were productive and safe and also opportunities for career progression. So what was suggested is that having an engaging conditions that were work flexibilities is recognized, adequate staffing levels, opportunities for promotion, job security and well-paid work and personal engagement of being respected and having a sense of belonging to the work and the workplace and that having educational experiences that provided pathways to progress along and work that was engaging because it was in a supportive learning and working environment and allowed individuals to find a passion and exercise that passion and having a clear pathway to progress along and support in terms of the transitions that young people will make into the occupation and then across across their, their, their advancement in their careers and having a safe environment in which that occurs. And for First Nations people, engaging with others so that they have support and can be supported and sustained in, in those workplaces. And yet there were disengaging conditions, those which would might cause people to leave. And this was over demanding workload and lack of recognition and personal disengagement with this issue of distance away from home and work that might be confronting. So in terms of what was being suggested that would assist retention, there was a positive work environment, opportunities for career advancement and good pay. And key qualities of a healthcare career was being part of a work team, being treated respectfully and achieving worthwhile goals through work. And then the, in terms of re working in, in remote and regional communities, it was about the opportunities that would arise, the, the interest of diverse work tasks, and also the ability to find accommodation. So you can see across these three factors that there are common threads, and this is the provision of support and engagement, both in the educational setting and in the healthcare setting, and the integration of those experiences. So many of these factors are related to how experiences are provided and support in both the education and the practice setting. This then leads to some recommendations from this, uh, the, the, this small study. And that is the health, healthcare sector needs to engage with schools and vocational education provisions at local, state and national levels to ensure that it, its needs are met through both the public and private provision of vocational education. And also that it should seek to influence the content and form and provision of experiences of, of vocational education for healthcare workers and in ways that are commensurate with its goals and contributions and that importantly locally based and informed decision making mechanisms are used to secure prepare and retain sufficient numbers of workers time and time again we we heard about localized arrangements ways of engaging with people that were were, were suited to the particular circumstances so that factor of localized action seemed to be important and localized engagement 
seem to be essential. And employers then therefore need to engage with young people to attract, prepare and retain them as healthcare workers, and that practical strategies trialled and uh, adopted across healthcare systems and communities are needed to optimise the recruitment, preparation and retention of these healthcare employees. And so consequently, <clears throat> models of preparation that involve both the workplace and practice settings, such as cadetships and traineeships, that are required that provide those experiences, but importantly, integrate them um, in education and practice settings, augmented by effective guidance and support. And these need to be adopted um, widely. So um, if you want any further advice about this project, if, if you've got any questions about it, queries or suggestions, these please direct them to myself and my email address is provided there. So I wish you well for the conference. I apologise for not being able to be there. It simply wasn't possible and I hope it goes well and I hope this short presentation has been helpful in some way. Thank you.